In this video, uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to control uh, the Arduino using Python and processing and using the Fermata library. Um, and we're uh, going to use the uh, Arduino to both receive input using a switch and um, to act as an output device uh, where its digital pins can control things. An LED, for instance, will turn on uh, from the processing Python side. So the circuit that we're starting with looks like this. Um, this is from the circuits.io uh, uh, model and uh, I'm, I'm not going to be able to actually demonstrate the Arduino but we'll look at the circuit so at least uh, you can understand what what uh, is happening uh, on the physical Arduino. So um, as far as output goes there's an LED here connected to uh, digital pin 13 and uh, it's going to uh, we're going to control a digital pin 13 on the Arduino as an output so when we set it to high current will flow through here through uh, a 150 ohm resistor and down into ground and then uh, as an input device we have a switch here a push button switch and we've wired it kind of in the most we've wired it up in the kind of example, the Arduino push button example, uh, which is to say that we've given it five volts, um, five volts from here on the one side. And when we close the switch, uh, the uh, five volts goes through. Um, we have on the, on the other side of the switch, we have a, a, a line to a digital pin 12. And we've also tied that down to ground through a 1K resistor as a pull-down resistor. And of course, you could wire this switch up in a simpler fashion if you want to use uh, one, of the, uh, one of the other configurations. Uh, uh, but we've used this configuration. So uh, that pin, digital 12 pin, uh, we're going to use as an input. So if you were to hook up your Arduino in this fashion and plug it in, um, you need to kind of set that up before you can proceed with uh, the processing code. So here's the Arduino editor and what uh, I'm looking at here is I'm going to go under examples. You just can't quite see that menu but uh, under examples I've installed a library called Fermata so I'm going to go under um, just quickly I'm going under sketch uh, include library manage libraries and if you don't have Fermata yet installed, you can find it down here and install it uh, using this new uh, installer tool that uh, is part of the Arduino. I just ended up updating it to the latest version. And Fermata, what Fermata does is it takes uh, it, its uh, code that will read, uh, the scan all your various inputs um, and send those over a serial uh, connection back to uh, processing on the other side on the, on your computer and likewise receive any uh, information that's coming from processing and update the appropriate ports so it does a lot of that work for you uh, that being said you don't need to use Fermata if you want to do something like this you might find that um, you know some other uh, custom code will be better but this is a really easy way to get up and running and uh, we have uh, example code from the Fermata library that we can use right out of the box and I've got standard Fermata here that I've opened up and the first step here is to open up this example um, from the Fermata library standard Fermata and upload it into your Arduino and mine is not uploading because I'm currently running uh, I'll just explain that in a moment so I'm going to upload again so um, now, of course, the standard kind of uh, the standard kind of uh, warnings apply with the Arduino when you're uploading. There's a couple of warnings coming up, but that did upload. And uh, I'm just going to go under Tools for a moment and just double check that uh, it, you should just double check, of course, your um, your USB port, your serial port. And let's just look closely at this for a moment because my serial port is coming up as this string here with a check mark it uploaded successfully so I know this is the correct uh, port for my Arduino and I'm going to look for a USB modem 1421 and that's going to be important in a moment on the processing side 
Okay, so we've uploaded code into the Arduino and it's ready to send and receive information. We've got this circuit built and we're going to go over to the processing side now. Now this code I'll make available for you just to kind of get you started. Um, this comes from our game controller project and uh, I'm in processing 3 um, and I'm in Python mode. Last year we successfully did this in processing 2 in the Python mode and uh, you can do this in Java as well but this code is uh, this code is uh, I think for students who are using Python this is a, a good starting point if they're familiar with Python and processing already so first thing you need to do is you need to uh, use the library so I'm going to uh, just double check the library situation on this on this computer I'm under the sketch menu and I'm looking at libraries now I'm going to add library this library here Arduino format has been installed and you can see the check mark there but if you don't have it installed on your setup that's going to be your first step so um, it's a simple thing you just uh, it's part of the suite of uh, libraries that has been updated for processing 3 so you just need to hit, hit the install button and it will uh, be installed into your processing setup then you have to include these two lines here these two lines will um, import that library code into your uh, into your processing sketch um, and then it's ready to connect now one of the, the first steps that uh, one of the next steps you need to do is you need to make sure that processing is connecting properly to the Arduino on your serial port and th uh, this can be a bit bit of a trick so this line here on, in my code says um, it basically is going to print out all the um, connections that the Arduino object is able to see so let me just run this and take a look at what we see. So this string down here in this box is this Arduino.list and it's it is a Python list that we're seeing starting with the square bracket here and if I were to count if I, I, I need to look through this and, until I find what I think is the string that I'm expecting to use. Now I know it's this one tty.usb modem 1421 so I knew that it had something like USB modem 1421 in it from the Arduino side and it's the TTY that we're going to use. So if I count forward using uh, using a string index then I'll start counting from 0 at the first one and this one is number 11. So I know when I come back up to the code here that I need to use the 11th uh, item in this Arduino list in order to connect to the Arduino through the USB cable. So this is a this is this is going to be different on your machine. You need to uh, double check which connection you're using from the Arduino side. Then you need to find that name, the TTY version or, of that name on this side, and connect to it. And you may need to try it a couple times until you kind of get it working. So um, just stepping through this code quickly. In setup we have this Arduino object that we're going to first declare as global because it's going to be used in the draw loop so we need to make sure we have access to it and then uh, this was just to help us find out what uh, object or which uh, index we we need to use for the connection here we establish the connection we're using this as the Arduino class that we've imported from the library and we're using this to connect to the to the uh, 11th uh, item on that list and you can just use these defaults uh, as well. This is a little bit of Java syntax coming through. This is a Java library we're using in the Python uh, mode so we see this as one of the keywords that's kind of the equivalent to the Python self but nonetheless this is just you use this string you just need to change this index. And then here we're establishing pin modes for two pins pin 12 is set as an input and pin 13 as an output and then we'll make use of them in the draw loop again you need to use that Arduino object so um, we'll uh, define it as global and then and I'm suddenly I'm not sure if that's actually necessary because it is an object but it's working so we'll just leave it at that 
and uh, you can try taking it out and see in both places and see what pretty sure it needs to be here but uh, now I'm now I'm not sure <laughs> um, but Arduino.digital right what's that going to do that's sending information back to pin 13 that's to control that LED and it should leave it as it's Arduino.low that that's setting it to a low state so we should see that turned off and this was just some code we were doing to read a number of pins but what we're really doing here is we're using digital read eventually it's going to read pin 12 it's up to but not including 13 so 12 is the last one and if it detects that it's high it's going to use a red fill when it draws it on the screen so I'm just going to re rerun that and then on this display if I push the button on the Arduino you see that fill red is changing the color of the of that last box so and what you can't see is that the the uh, the LED is currently off and I'll set that to high and I'll see that uh, the LED both in my circuit and the LED surface mounted on the Arduino is now turned on and that's about it that'll allow you to control both input and output on on the Arduino um, the only other thing to watch out for is when this is currently running you cannot go back to your Arduino and upload your code you'll get oops you'll get a uh, that standard um, error that you see when the connection is is uh, uh, unable to connect. So if you if you see that shut down your processing sketch, it's kind of grabbing the connection there and preventing the Arduino from uploading, and uh, and then you should be able to upload at that point. We've um, there that was successfully uploaded. Okay, and uh, that's about it. I'll post this code. Uh, somewhere for you to look